Hey guys, it's Slumming Ash. The Object 140 recently got buffed, and this thing is one of my most played tanks. I've got literally 1,400 games in it. My Mark of Excellence isn't 95% anymore, but it's at 90%. And because it got buffed, I wanted to give this thing a try. I think it's... I fought against it. I haven't played it yet. It's going to be my first battle on the tank, basically. And whenever I fought against someone in a 140, I've been amazed by how strong the frontal armor is. If you angle that slightly, it's actually really annoying to pen. So... We're going to be playing this thing today. I think it's going to be a blast. Now, before I get into game, I wanted to mention if you are interested in my mentoring services, there's a link down in the description. You can just click that link and it basically gives you all the details. Now, we're on the map highway. So because of how I think this tank has been changed, I haven't looked at the stats or anything. I know there's more gun depression. Um... <laughs> I'm getting, I'm all over the place. A couple things. If your tank has more gun depression, you do not need to use it, first of all. So just because there's hills on the one line on this map and I have six degrees of gun depression does not force me to go to the one line on this map. What you want to do is you want to take this, your tank to the side that you think will get you the win. And what I see in this case is I see a bunch of tanks that I think will go to the city and a bunch of tanks that really, if they get on cap, whatever, I'll just defend the cap basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my tank to the city despite having the spawn to go to the one line. And despite, you know, well, there's two already, it just makes more sense. I want to go fight a mouse and E3 and stuff like that, as opposed to dealing with a Leo PTA, a 430, and a Skoda, tier 9 tanks, and a Haldown STB1 in the field. I'll kill them in the cap circle if I need to. I'd much rather just win the city. Now, I like to play the city aggressively. So if you've ever seen me do this, I'll do this play in a Leopard 1 or whatever. But basically, I try to get over, well, there's a couple things. There's two ways to play the city in a medium. One is to basically snipe from the position of the 1390. Now, that's justifiable if they have tanks that you think are going to snipe. And what I see is our 1390 is not really scouting, first of all. And I also don't really think they have many tanks that are going to snipe. Like, look at these tank destroyers. How many of them really are going to be an E9? Basically one at most. So the 263 is a brawling TD. The WZ can totally brawl. The E3, 183, you'd expect those tanks into the city. Now, they're going to win the field. No surprise. I kind of knew that going into this battle. It's a 3v4 in that case, plus the, ST, the STB1 should be there. So we'll see what the 1390 spots. Maybe I'm wrong on my prediction, but if he spots nothing, I'm going to be vindicated and YOLOing into the city like I am. You can see I've got a 62A with me, and I try to point my turret to the left just in case there's someone back there that you can shoot at on the move, basically. So 62A is... Just poke... When there's two tanks on a flank like this, you don't need to side scrape. But there you go, we're side scraping, and we're I can spot most of this alleyway. Now you can see I haven't prioritized your range, but there's oh. Okay. So I got lit. Who will outspot me in this instance? 1390 is in the field. Actually, I have no clue who spotted me. It could have been a tank destroyer. It could be the WZ, right, with just epic camo or something like that. So I'm not gonna play that angle. If I think there's a TD there, it will be way too expensive to poke. And you can see this 62 is pushing in. At this point, I would consider going back to base. And the reason for that is their team has not been aggressive enough into the city for us to actually expect to win it. What will happen is when we push in, we're bringing all their tank destroyers into the fight, right? So these guys, they're going to be fighting a huge disadvantage because they're basically pushing into a 6v five currently once the e3 gets in it'll be a 6v6 but their arties are going to have shots and things like that so you would expect your team to actually lose the city in this instance and i can't afford to have us lose the city and the field in this game so i'm going to go back to the field whether or not it's a right play or a wrong play we'll find out in a bit could very easily be a wrong play this is always a challenging situation to be in 1390 how do I deal with this without getting sent by TDs? Well, dropping down will keep me safe from tank destroyers. Okay, and I get the kill. So I'm going to chill here just in case already snapshots at me. You can see the 430 is starting to push in. So they're down a scout, which is great. Our already are going to survive way longer because of that. And we're going to need those arties to defend the base because they're going to have four. They should have five tanks pushing in, but their STB-1 isn't spotted. So where's the STB-1? Well, if I was the STB-1 and I was unlit, I would probably start off sniping from A6 and then move in through the mid. So you might expect to find the STB-1 in G2 randomly, because if you were an STB-1 sniping in base, you'd be inclined to come up to G2 because that's where you can actually get hull down and kind of use your gun depression. So whether or not that's a good play, that's what I would expect the STB-1 to be doing. Now, they've got tanks pushing in. A lot of people will get up onto this ridge. I don't like that as much. I'd rather chill somewhere here where I've got bushes and things, right? So this game has a lot of potential. 
here's what I'm going to do. I know I said I want to be using bushes, but no armored tanks. I've got a char future to my right. And I should have shitloads of already support here. Oh shit, I'm getting yoloed. Okay, so already helps me out. Luckily, I bounced two, bounced two of those guys' shells. I'm going to kill the Skoda here. I see the 62. So killing the Skoda will let me deal with the PTA easily. Already kills him. Perfect. So I'm going to drive forwards just to stay hull down. He fired, so I'm going to beat his reload looking at the map. STB1, I think, might be the guy in the city. That would make a lot of sense. So I'll just keep putting shots into this guy. We'll defend the base, then we'll go after the 62A. Obviously, the map isn't perfectly designed because I can't read that. Now, this guy missed. So after this guy dies, we're going after the 62. Now, a lot of people just rush the shot here. I'm going to mostly fully aim it just to try to increase the probability of that going in. You can see we haven't won the city yet, despite that being where our whole team is. So I need to worry about anyone unspotted. 1390 doesn't really spot shit in the fields. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many tanks do they have? Minus 1. I think everyone's lit here. It looks like... Two, four, uh, lots of tanks are spotted, basically. Get that shot, goes in. Okay, so from here, the score is technically a tie, but they have the advantage IMO. Um, we have the advantage HP-wise looking at it, the E3's full HP, but they've got tanks and we have two arty. <laughs> that makes up two of our numbers. So in the city fight, our arty aren't as useful as they normally would be. So I'm going to have to basically play well in this instance. I want to try to kill their low HP. So I'm going to look this way just to see what HP the enemy team has. And if I can flank them, that would be great. I have to make sure I don't put myself in a crossfire with the E3 and the 2-6 whatever. So I've got the mouse's flank, that's great. He's not actually seeing me. There's a lot of fences here and I can't see them exactly. So I'm just gonna shoot basically until I, well, yeah, that one should, no, okay. So how do I do this? Well, the 1390 is not spotting anymore and I got lit. So let's not throw, honestly, let's not throw. <laughs> I don't want to get hit for 800 by an E3, basically. That would ruin any chances we have at winning. And I think this 183 is looking this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down. I can kind of get hull down like so. And you can see I kind of have the flank on this Conqueror. Gun handling is a 140s gun handling, so it's not amazing. We should... Well, he should get safe instead of letting me kill him, but there you go. Okay, now that 183 is there. I'm going to avoid his shot. Now, that E3... I see him. It's not an issue. Okay, so who do I want to fight here? Well, I've got the mouse, C3 and 268, and the 183. The tanks that will help the team the most to kill are the E3 and the 263, in my opinion. And the mouse. <laughs> so basically, if we kill their whole team, we should be able to win this one. <laughs> Brilliant strats with Lemming Rush. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to ignore the 183, because that guy was suppressing me, and if he keeps me busy, I'm not helping the team, basically. And I'm going to load heat, and this E3 should expect shouldn't expect this at all. Once I kill the E3, oh, he's dead. I can now move in like this, and I can go after the mouse and the, basically the rest of their team. So these shots are going to go in. What's going to happen here? Already helping me out. So I'm just putting this thing in between myself and the mouse. I want to save my HP for the 183 and shit. This guy... It's delaying, which is annoying. Hopefully the 1390 gets shot here and not myself. Okay, 1390 takes gets the kill. All right, that's the game. That's four kills, maybe five. Let's see how it goes against the 263. Okay, one more. Okay, so that's the game. Uh, that was not the greatest. I think I would have had more damage if I'd stayed in the city, but I'm not sure... <laughs> a lot of weird things happened in that one. Let's go play another. Basically, it caught me out how the Skoda yoloed me like that. That was confusing because I was like, what is the Skoda doing? He shouldn't be yoloing at such a stupid play, <laughs> basically. Um, and then also they did surprisingly well in the city. My team did surprisingly well. You would expect their team to win that most of the time. So what I don't know what these things are. I'll have to find out later. Let's go into the next game. Yeah, it was third place. So you can see, oh, this is why we did well. We have a fucking Maho player who went city and a E3. So that would explain a lot. <laughs> okay, so for the second one, we're on the map Fisherman's Bay. Now, we don't have any Maho players to see my damage, <laughs> basically to compete with. Um, I'm gonna, there's a couple things you can do on a map like this. So the enemy team, Fisherman's Bay really sucks, first of all. So if you're expecting some sort of great result on this map, good luck. 
because it's really hard to do. What often happens is if you make any sort of play on the one line, you're going to get artied. And so in this case, they have a bat shot artie. The bat shot artie is just going to be here. A lot of bat shot arties will play down here, basically. And same with the GW Tiger P. I wouldn't expect him on the one line. They're all going to be down here, lobbing shells into G1, which is where I could take a medium if there was no artie, but there's two of them, so it's not going to work. Uh, the other thing is the enemy team has a bunch of really armored heavies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off in the middle of the map, and I'll show you the play I like, because I like to go into here to try to get shots and some eyes on tanks kind of in the G line, G1, 2, and 3, basically. So I'll drive straight into that. There. And then what you do is you watch your map to see where things progress because their heavy should go to the city, but unless they push, you're not going to get damage. So it often takes a really kind of patient game. Now, luckily the Char Future is not taking our spot. That's a Yudas. I see him, but I can't shoot him. There we go. Okay. So you can see from here, the bushes are actually pretty solid. Now I'm moving up while I'm reloading just to kind of try to spot. And you can see there's an M46 pattern. I wouldn't have lit that guy. There's actually a hot Hawk 30 who's spotting. Is he spotting though? Yeah, okay, good. So the Hawk 30 will light shit, basically. And what I'm going to do is I'll sit here and I'll wait for shots on people uh, because that's the only play. And you can see, like, this position just gets already. so... Looking at the map, okay, so the enemy team's actually pushing the one line. Now, this is dumb of them, honestly. There's the Yudas here. It looks like I might have hit him blind, which was great. The Char Future got that shot. T-34B behind us, and there's a Hawk 12 here. So I'm going to ignore the 34B, although I should kind of have shots. He's... In all likelihood, he's hull down. These are better shots to take anyways. So I'll shoot at the Hawk. I can drive forwards to do that. I can also drive backwards, but I can't really drive backwards with those tanks where they are. So this is actually a really rough situation to be in. But normally I would advise you leave in this context, but we have an IS-3A and a tank scouting for us. I'm fine with staying here. If they poke and shoot me once, they'll dive for it. So to me, it's worth it to maintain this position basically. Because once this M46 Patton dies, I can shoot at the 907, 140, and T-34 in the middle. That's a Hawk 12, though. I have shots. Fuck. I'm really bad at aiming. <laughs> Alright, so I'm 46 pokes, and he... What is... <laughs> what the fuck? Supposed to be one of the most accurate tanks in the game. Alright. This guy keeps poking, and I'm like, there's no way he's gonna poke. That would be dumb of him. And I'm looking away, and this <laughs> see, like, Hawk 12 shots. The M46 is certainly going to poke. And I track the Hawk 12. Are you kidding? Okay, I actually need these already to survive. No, okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to camp the M46. Okay, good. <laughs> now, I, I, now the Hawk 12 is dead, so I don't have to worry about Artie, because our Artie are dead too. And this is going to be a hard game to win. So Tiger's there, no shots. This 140. So our Hawk isn't spotting anymore, but I should be able to light that. Here's what I'm going to do. I think these players will have basically begun to ignore me. So I'm going to take a bit of a gamble. And that M40... His timing! <laughs> okay. <laughs> these shots hopefully go in. Good. Okay. So I'm going to do as much as I can. And then we're going to deal with the mid. I'm going to shoot the M46. Because I assumed the pattern would die, basically. So this shot goes in. For whatever reason, this guy hasn't shot me. So I was lucky on that regard. But I, he was also lucky that with his timing. It was so stupid. Uh, okay. Here's where I'm going to get a shot. Probably on someone. If the T-34 moves forwards, I have shots. And if he backs up, I might have the side of his turret. 140 is clearly looking at me. I'm going to go for his commander's hatch. I'm just going to get safe before he can respond. M46 isn't an issue. Okay, so we can actually stay here. But they are starting to push through the city. So what should I do? I need to go deal with that. This guy missed his shot. So I was okay with taking the hit there. As, because I want to shoot at this IS-3A and whatever else pushes through here. So that's the strat. We basically need to keep our U-100 alive. So who do I focus? Probably the biggest threat to the U-100, and that's almost going to always be the most aggressive player, but I don't really have a choice right here. How do I move to get a shot? Here we go. Okay, so we're just going to hold left click and hope we don't get RD'd. I should probably have my front towards RD at this point. And that's exactly what I'm going to do, just in case the 140 becomes an issue. So I just glanced at the one line, because I need to make sure that's not a problem. Okay, and these shots, I'm going to ignore the IS-3A. The VK is such a bigger threat. Other people that aren't a tier 10 tank can kill the guy. Okay, we're going to start shooting gold. Yeah, these VKs are the right targets. I'm, I'm surprised no one's actually killed the Russian Heavy. But I, I, I'm hoping someone else will, because I have more DPM. I'd rather use it against the VK right here. So these shots are going in. I'm hull down. So I should be able to win this fight nine times out of ten right here. Seven, seven, seven gets away. 
Okay, and how do we turn this into a win from here? I want to kill this tier 9. Good. He's dead. And then from here, we might get a single shot on this VK. Luckily, that goes in. Okay, so we're faced with this strategic problem, right? So the game, we're a bit of a loss. You can see pointing my front towards RD. I got lucky not to get clicked in this instance. But on the whole, it was a decent strat. Now, what's going to happen is if we start to lose the mid, we're going to lose the game because... Well, it should be pretty self-evident. They'll have a 140 in the middle. <laughs> like, I don't know if I need to like describe what happens when they have a 140 who's held down above you. So I can't give this position up, basically. So I'm going to go back to here. And this is directly to challenge this 140. Might be a bit of a dumbass play. Okay. Now, the reason I shot him here is actually to try to bait other people out and to try to scare them. So you can see 34 comes after me, and that's just to find out where the hell they are. Um, from here, I'm doing a lot. We've got like three tanks behind me. I'm already safe. So if I keep the mid lit, this is actually a game winning position because I want these tanks to have eyes on their enemies in the mid. So 140s here. I would expect that T-34 to be waiting for shots. I would also expect the 907 to be flanking me, but this play works because I've literally got a Hawk 30 watching my ass. Okay. Now, for whatever reason, my teammates aren't shooting this 140. Or E5. Okay, so this is pretty simple. I basically have to track this guy and not back up. I have to let this E5 use his DPM against me, and I have to trust my teammates to kill this guy. Okay, so here I actually have to push. Okay, and now, hopefully my teammates can shoot this 140. And their VKs are not looking, so... I'm hoping that Yag doesn't become an issue. Bruh. <laughs> Alright, this guy's doing really well, but I actually don't think there's much I can do about it. <sighs> okay, so, I mean, 5k damage, but that one had a lot of potential. I think that if I knew the Yag Tiger wasn't on the one line, it could have been a win, because I could have... Honestly, how do you win that? We just had three tanks die in the back of the map, like, come on. <laughs> Bro, that could have been a win. Oh my god. That's so when I started World of Tanks, that's what I wanted. These types of games. I'm okay with the loss as long as there was like a chance at the win. And if you get an epic win posted on YouTube, it's phenomenal. So that was really good. How did my team do? Probably can't top on damage. Yeah, high caliber, 5,200 damage. That was all live, of course. You get to see that shit happen. Um yeah, okay. Our team was not up to snuff. This guy did very well. So did the 907. You can see, like, his position won their team the game because he was, like, controlling the middle of the map is really important. You can see I tried to deal with that. But it looks like I had this guy supporting me <laughs> and a couple other tanks that really didn't hit their shots. So, you know, if they had done a bit more, I think it would have been closer. We might not have been able to win if they had done more, but there you go. So, that's the game. If you want to see more, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. I will be doing more live games because I love this shit, and I hope to see you around. Later, guys. Bye-bye.